Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A piece of Detroit history that helped spawn the Motown sound was severely damaged in our last flood, and tonight they're vowing to bring it back. A local landscaping business is asking for your help tonight. They want to know, have you seen a trailer that looks just like this one? They say if you have, more than likely it's theirs. I'm Larry Spro, and I'll tell you how they say someone stole their trailer in just minutes and now it's affecting their business. Okay, Larry, and a road raid shooting leads state police to a home in Oakland County, resulting in a half dozen arrests. We're going to begin, though, with Ben tracking three rounds of rain and storms as we head into the weekend. Yeah, ben, are we going to uh, be waking up to this wet weather tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, depending on what time you get up. Yes, uh, Kim, you're right. Uh, that's the first round. It's not the strongest, but we will be seeing some wet weather around breakfast time tomorrow. Uh, tonight, we saw some downpours. Those were mostly in the west and south zone, but you can see from radar, those are pretty much done. And we can already start to see some activity up in the UP. We'll eventually be getting that down here towards tomorrow morning. So let's pick it up tomorrow, 7, 7 to 10 a.m. We'll be seeing showers and storms mainly on the east side. Those dry out by lunchtime. Here comes round two, and you can see some pretty hefty thunderstorms there starting to form. This is out ahead of a main line in any of those storms in the afternoon and evening could become severe with damaging winds. Behind that, the third round is going to be after midnight, mostly in the north zone, and that stuff should be a lot weaker as it'll be decaying thunderstorms coming out of northern lower Michigan. Sunday looks a whole lot different, a whole lot better, too. We'll talk about that, but there are your three chances. Morning, afternoon, which does hold that severe threat. It's a slight risk for severe weather and more showers possible after midnight. We'll talk more about the timing and who gets what and, of course, just how hot things are going to get on Sunday in just a few minutes. Okay. We'll get right back to you. All right, Ben. St. Stephen AME Church on Detroit's west side has been a spiritual home for Detroiters since 1918. It also has a rich Motown musical history, history that was submerged by our recent floods. Mara McDonald's at the church tonight. Uh, Mara, we're not talking about the sanctuary, but the gym. Guys, I am standing in the gym at St. Stephen AME Church, and I would like you to take a look around at this space, and then I would like you to close your eyes and listen, because all those decades ago, you had acts like Smokey Robinson and the Miracles start their careers in the basement of this church, in this gym, on talent nights and rehearsing for Motown. Water was coming up through the drain floor. Two feet of water rushing into the building, covering the entire floor. We had a crew of members to come in, faithful members, and I want to um, thank them so very much for all the work they did. Every day for seven days, getting the water out and trying to save the space. It's more than a gym. Uh, this was this gym was a mecca uh, for many since its inception when it was built in 1956. Including some young men and women who showcased their musical skills on the church's talent nights and then later on as a rehearsal space. Those youngsters, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, The Temptations, and many others. This church, because of this gym, was more than just a religious place. It was a social place, it was a political place, it was a recreational place. It serves so many needs. And now, because of the flooding, the original wood floor is just ruined. Contractors say to replace it with vinyl is about 50000 To replace it with wood, more like 100000 It's a hefty bill, but the congregation can't bear the thought of so much history just ending up as forgotten and closed off. Something has to be the, uh, the anchor in this community and St. Stephen chose to be the anchor. So the church is trying to preserve this historical legacy by going the modern route. They have established a GoFundMe page. We have all the details for it on clickondetroit.com. We're in the gym in the basement at St. Stephen. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. Loved ones gathered to remember an 18-year-old who was shot and killed while riding her bicycle on Detroit's west side. That shooting happened Wednesday on Pingree Street near Linwood. Police say Takaya Allen was not the target, but was caught in gunfire aimed at someone else. There will never be another Takaya, but a 
many young personnel out here can aspire to be like her. And I will miss her the rest of my life. Well, Detroit police released surveillance video of a car they're looking for in connection to the shooting. It's a bright red Ford Taurus with unique rims. Anyone with information is asked to call Detroit police. A Detroit business says they've been targeted by thieves not once but twice. Took two of their trailers in broad daylight, but as our Larry Spruill reports, this time it was caught on camera. Gregory Smith says the trailer was sitting right here in this very spot, right in front of his business partner's home, when the thieves stole it within minutes, and it was all caught on camera. It's a property preservation company, as well as uh, landscaping. Uh, we do clean outs, board ups on vacant houses and stuff like that. And Gregory Smith, the owner of Rosado and Smith, says they have been busy, especially cleaning out basements from the recent floods. And it went to a screeching halt when they uh, stole everything. Smith says that happened just days ago on July 16th at 1130 in the morning. It was sitting right here. Someone stole right their trailer in just minutes and it was caught on camera. Now you can see this dark colored truck driving away with the company's trailer connected to it. There was a silver Cadillac that was the lookout behind us and they came up, but it was a late 90s green uh, Chevy Silverado 1500. Um, they loaded up and just, I, I can't even Im like imagine how they got it so quick. Smith says now he's asking for your help to get it back because he says it was not cheap to buy it in the first place. So it's really close to 10 grand, uh, it's mighty 700. He showed us this trailer because he said the stolen one looks just like this one. But if all of this wasn't enough, he tells me this is not the first time someone stole from them. This is the second time. Uh, the first time they actually got me for older trailer with two Cub Cadets on it. That one had their equipment with it and it happened some weeks ago, but get this. And they stole it from the exact same spot. It really comes off the sweat of me and my guys' backs. Uh, there's no loans, nothing like that. We really worked hard, stacked our money and went out there and purchased it to make our job easier. He tells me he did file several police reports with police and police are now investigating. Meanwhile, there is a GoFundMe account set up and information is on the website. Click on Detroit.com. Reporting on Detroit's east side, Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry, six people now in custody after a case of road rage turns violent on I-696. State police say a tow truck driver was in the westbound lanes near Woodward when another driver became angry, felt that he was in his way, and that driver opened fire. And the bullet just missed the tow truck driver's head and went through the back window of the tow truck. Unfortunately, no one was hurt. But state police then tracked that car to a home in Troy. They arrested a suspect and a female passenger. Then a search warrant was executed at the home. And while we have not been given a lot of details yet, we know that it resulted in another four arrests. Tonight, one Metro Detroit County has reached the state vaccination goal. Oakland County has reached a 70% vaccination rate. It wants to get the rest of the population vaccinated and is focusing on getting the shot to college students. Meanwhile, the state reports 1,295 cases and 21 deaths over the past three days. It's an average of 431 cases per day. Cases have increased 47% from last week. An orange barrel alert as we head into the weekend. Tomorrow morning, northbound I-275 is going to be closed at 8 mile from 5 in the morning to 9 a.m. to allow crews to repair electrical lines. Uh, those were damaged by the recent storms, as you might imagine. Access to southbound I-275 will be shut down from 96, M5, and 696. Planned closures for Sunday, though, have been rescheduled. Still ahead, a 10 year old girl walking her dog is attacked by a coyote. Video showing how her little Yorkie fought back and saved the day. Coming up. Oh. Can anybody hear me? I'm trying to talk to the supervisor. An ambulance hijacked at gunpoint with a patient and EMT inside. The wild chase that included the gunman talking to dispatch on the radio. But first, a local swimmer fulfilling her Olympic dream after one of the worst moments of her life. After everything we've been through the last year, I'm just happy I'm going. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm just happy I'm going. Her long journey and what it took to get to Tokyo next.